Forner Ray was born in Sedan, France, the son of a metal worker and a homemaker. Acquaintances remembered him as a quiet, intelligent child who enjoyed chess and classical music. He would later claim to have been sexually abused as a child by his mother. As an adult, he drifted through a series of menial jobs, including forestry worker and school supervisor. Forner Ray was first arrested in 1966 for sexually assaulting a young girl. He was arrested again in 1984 for a series of sexual assaults against teenage girls, for which he served three years in prison. While in prison, Forner Ray corresponded with Monique Olivier via a prison pen pal program. He wrote to her of his fantasies of raping and murdering virginal girls, she responded that she would help him fulfill those fantasies if he killed her husband, although he never committed this murder. After he was released from prison in 1987, they began a relationship. Soon afterward, he began raping and murdering young girls, with Olivier as his accomplice. On December 11, 1987, Forner Ray and Olivier drove, in separate vehicles, to Auxerre. Seeing 17-year-old Isabel Laville, whom the couple had seen a day or two earlier and were targeting, walking home from school, Olivier stopped to ask Laville to join her in the car and give her directions, which Laville agreed to do. Driving down the road, Olivier reached the spot where Forner Ray was standing with his car, pretending it had broken down. After Olivier, as planned, pretended to offer him a lift, he got into her car. Forner Ray choked Laville with a piece of rope, before Olivier sedated her with Rehypnol. The couple brought the girl to their home in St. Cyr Le Colons, where Forner Ray raped and strangled her. They threw Laville's body down a disused well in Bussy and Ope. Her remains were recovered from the well on July 11, 2006. In March 1988, Forner Ray was contacted by 30 year old Farida Hamish, the wife of Jean Pierre Heliguark, an imprisoned bank robber with whom Forner Ray had shared a cell prior to the latter's release in October 1987, who asked Forner Ray to help her unearth a hall from a cemetery in Fontenay en Parisie, which had been stolen by members of the Gang des Postiches. After Forner Ray and Hamish managed to retrieve the hall, which consisted of gold ingots and coins, Hamish gave Forner Ray a share worth 500,000 francs for helping her dig it up and hiding it in her apartment in Vitry sur Seine. On 12th of April, aiming to steal Hamish's share, Forner Ray and Olivier lured Hamish out of her home and drove her to Clairefontaine en Evelyn, where she was strangled and her body buried, before the couple broke into her home and stole the hall. They used the money they made from it to buy a chateau called the Chateau du Sautou in Donchery. Hamish's body was never found. By August, Olivier was pregnant with Forner Ray's baby. On 3rd of August, the couple drove to a supermarket in chalon sur marne now chalon en champagne and encountered 20-year-old Fabienne Leroy in the car park. With Olivier feigning illness, the couple asked Leroy to join them in their car and give them directions to a doctor's surgery. After Leroy got in, the couple drove to a forest near the military camp of mormalon le grand Forner Ray ordered Olivier to look at Leroy's hymen to see if it was still intact, but Olivier refused. After raping Leroy, Forner Ray shot her in the chest. In January 1989, Forner Ray met 21-year-old Jean-Marie Desremault on the evening train to charleville mezieres The two conversed before arriving in Charleville, where Desremault was staying at a convent. Desremault met Forner Ray and Olivier, who had assumed false identities, at the train station again on 18th of March, and the couple invited Desremault to come to their house in Flowing, an offer she accepted, and Forner Ray promised he would drive her home afterwards. After they got to Flowing, Forner Ray asked Desremault if she was a virgin, and she told him she was not and that she had a boyfriend. Enraged, he attacked her. She fought back as he attempted to rape her, and as she attempted to escape, the couple gagged her with adhesive bandages before Forner Ray strangled her. Forner Ray and Olivier drove to Donchery and buried Desremault's body in the garden of the Chateau du Sautou. Forner Ray and Olivier married in July 1989. On the afternoon of 20th of December, they drove across the Franco-Belgian border to saint servé Namur, with their one-year-old son. Forner Ray saw 12-year-old Elizabeth Bridget walk to a friend's house, and waited outside for her until she left to walk the short distance home just before 7 p.m. He asked her to give him directions to a doctor's surgery for his son. She agreed to do so, and the couple drove back to flowing with her. When Forner Ray undressed the girl, he saw that she was menstruating, so Olivier cleaned Bridget's genitals. The next day, the couple took Bridget to the chateau, where Forner Ray strangled her after a failed attempt to suffocate her with a plastic bag. Her body was buried in the garden of the chateau, near to that of Jean-Marie Desremault. There were a number of reported sightings of Bridget, in Belgium and abroad, in the years following her disappearance, and a number of people were suspected by police of abducting her, including another serial killer, Marc Dutroux. 
After Dutroux's arrest in 1996, Bridget's mother Marie Noël Bouzet helped to organize the White March in honor of Belgium's missing and murdered children. The remains of Bridget and Desremont were exhumed from the gardens of the Château du Sautu on July 3, 2004, after Fourneray and Olivier confessed to the killings. The final known murder Fourneray committed with Olivier's help took place on November 21, 1990 near France's western coast. The couple drove to a shopping center in Ries after leaving court in Nantes, where they had been convicted of burglary. They saw Natasha Danaeus, a 13-year-old local girl, walking through the car parked towards her home having been sent to fetch her mother's forgotten purse. The couple lured Danaeus into the van, asking her for directions. After driving to a secluded area near the coast, Furner Ray stabbed Danaeus twice in the chest with a screwdriver and strangled her before leaving her body on the beach. Later investigations suggested that the girl's body was raped after the murder. Eight days later, Jean Groix, a neighbor of Danaeus's family, was arrested after a white van belonging to him matched the description of the van that Danaeus' sister had seen her get into from across the shopping center's car park at the time she disappeared. Groix was found to be lodging suspected members of the ETA in his home. Police suspected that Danaeus had found out about this and that he killed her for that reason. Two months later, Groix committed suicide in his prison cell. He was reported to have been unable to bear the burden of having been accused of murder. The Fourneray family moved to sartre custin Jadin, Belgium in the early 1990s. Forner Ray admitted that he committed two more murders in France between 2000 and 2001, his first in nine and a half years. He drove alone across the Franco-Belgian border to charleville mezier on May 16, 2000 and lured 18-year-old Céline Cezanne, who was on her way home from school, into his van in the late afternoon. Driving with her back to Belgium, he raped her before strangling her with a rope and dumping her body in a forest in Chugny, vres sur -Simas. Cezanne's skeletal remains were discovered there by mushroom pickers on July 22, 2000. On May 5, 2001, Furner Ray drove back to Sedan and met Mananya Thumpong, a 13-year-old girl of Thai origin whom he had met and given a lift home a few weeks earlier, outside the local library. He invited her to come to his house and play with his son. Accepting this offer, Thumpong climbed into the van and was driven to Nol Vox, Palacil, where Furner Ray strangled her. Thumpong's remains were found on March 1, 2002, having been devoured almost entirely by wild animals. Forner Ray was arrested at his home in sartre custin Belgium, on June 26, 2003 after a failed attempt to kidnap a 13-year-old girl. He and Olivier were interrogated extensively but to no avail. A year later, Olivier told the police that her husband had killed a number of people since 1987. Forner Ray confessed to killing eight women, aged between 12 and 30, and a man who has never been identified. The bodies of four of the identified victims had been discovered in France and Belgium between 1988 and 2002. Olivier was arrested, as well, and she and Fourneray were extradited to France, where they helped police find the bodies of three of the four missing victims over the next two years. The trial took place in charleville mezières between 27 March and May 28, 2008. Fourneray was found guilty of the murders of all seven of the victims whose bodies had been found. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Olivier was sentenced to life with no possibility of parole for 28 years. Forner Ray and Olivier were also ordered to pay 1.5 million euros in moral compensation to family members of the victims. Neither appealed their sentences. Forner Ray admitted to eight murders prior to his trial in 2008. He was convicted of seven of these and sentenced to life in prison. In February 2018, Forner Ray confessed to killing two more women in Auxerre, Marie Angel Domes, an 18 year old disabled woman, in July 1988, and Joanna Parrish, a 20 year old British student, in May 1990. In March 2020, Forner Ray confessed to killing Estelle Musin, who disappeared from Guermont in January 2003. Two French journalists have suggested that Forner Ray killed former Minister for Labour Robert Boulin, who was involved in a real estate scandal at the time, based on a letter Forner Ray wrote to Olivier. Christian Renucci was one of the last people executed in France, having been convicted of the abduction and murder, committed on June 3, 1974, of Marie Dolores Rambla, aged 8. There were suspicions that Renucci might not actually have been the killer, having confessed and later retracting his confession. It was suggested that Fournere may have been involved, as Fournere was thought to be in the area at the time and had virtually the same car as Renucci. Careful analysis by an expert of courtroom photographs taken during Renucci's March 1976 trial, however, suggests that the courtroom observer in the photographs could not have been Furner Ray who, unlike this man, did not yet wear glasses and lacked a chin cleft. Furthermore, 
Fornere denied having been in the Marseille area when the crime took place on June 3, 1974, claiming he was working in Paris. Rashida Dadi, the then French Minister for Justice, who advocated legal reforms in France, wanted a more relaxed attitude to preventive custody and parole under supervision. She was heavily criticized by the judiciary. Forner Ray died on May 10, 2021 at the age of 79 after being admitted into the hospital with respiratory problems.